Hello everybody and welcome to 100 casts, the big 5-0, that's right. This is episode 50, we're halfway there guys, just another, what, like, three months, however long it's been, till we hit the end, half of a year to finish a YouTube series, that is, that's a little bit depressing, to be perfectly honest, but I've had fun, I hope you guys have had fun, we're gonna keep on going with this and we have episode 50 right here it is a 5v5 map sent into match rather sent into me by a fan of mine down in the LAN server and it looks like we have purple team going for a little bit of an invade here they already have Lee Sin set up in the try and they're getting the rest of their team right there they're going to be trying for a tri bush invade and it looks like they might be successful Kazares is walking in to five members of the enemy team the ignite is burning the crow is bouncing he's going to be going down Heal popped as well. That is first blood going over to Master Yi. That is exactly where you want your first blood to be. And that is the easiest first blood this Master Yi has gotten in his entire life. Vi is reconnected. Hopefully we won't see any other disconnect issues in the game. But that is first blood. Going to be going over to Purple Team. And they're actually going to be heading right back to their own red buff too. Which is which is a good, good call by them, I feel. Because they... Maokai was invading in onto their red buff. He actually got a sapling there, as you can see, sitting in the little camp, being adorable and waiting to explode on the nearest enemy as soon as one shows up. Got its one watchful eye looking out as Swains, speaking of watchful eyes, is going to catch Purple Team coming into the blue buff here. They're juking around in the enemy jungle. They've gone from the other side of the map all the way back up here, getting some vision onto that blue buff. They know exactly what is going on on blue team where everybody is starting and what buff is going to be going down first. Looks like Vi's actually gone over to her red buff, so that's going to be the start for blue team, whereas purple team has pulled their red buff way out off to the side, and they're going to be doing that probably just in case they had some wards set in on, in case blue team had some wards set in on the blue buff, red buff, rather. My colors today, I don't know what's wrong with them. A little bit of harass going from... The Swain on over to the LeBlanc. She's actually might be in a little bit of trouble here. Distortion is not back up yet. Forced to flash away. Very well-timed roam from Thresh coming up from the bottom lane. The pressure that that support roam put on. Already burned the flash in the middle lane, which isn't too terrible. LeBlanc still does have Distortion and is able to leap around using that. But not having the flash means she's missing kind of her backup right there. So she's going to have to be very careful with her Distortions when she uses them. As Lee Sin's actually going for the invade onto the blue buff, as you can see down in the minimap there, Swain has roamed out of the mid lane as well. Meanwhile, down in bottom lane, we have some harass going on between both sides. Actually, Tristana coming out behind on that one, not really surprising. Even though she does have the level advantage now, I'm actually a little bit surprised that she got that as we see Fiddle peeling off from the bottom lane to go after Vi, who's going for the counter invade. Lee Sin is very quick, though, in clearing the jungle, and he's on his way over here already, and Vi is low on health. Very low on health. Work walks right into the Lee Sin, and there is Best off to the side as well. That is Vi going to be falling over, giving another kill to Purple Team, and that is a double buff going their way as well. Nice refresh of the double buffs for Lee Sin. I'm sure he's not unhappy with that in the least. As Fiddlesticks returns down to the bottom lane. Kazada is trying to go for the hook there. Doesn't quite get it. Is up in top lane. Boogeyman Dark. Ooh, nice play. Landing. On to the Fiddlesticks, and he's getting traded down very low, actually. I haven't seen a Fiddlestick support in a while, and this is one of the reasons why he's very squishy. And against a lot of the hard engaged supports that are popular in the bottom lane nowadays, people like Thresh and Leona and Braum, to some extent, he can be bullied down out of the lane pretty effectively. However, he look, looks like Lee Sin's coming down to lend a bit of a helping hand to his bottom lane. He's landed the Q on Desires. He's going to be following that up with a Tempest Cripple. The Fear lands onto the Lucian. He's getting burned down incredibly quickly. The heal is not there to save his life. And he gets exhausted and then killed. Kill going over to Tristana. And this is really not how I expected this game to pan out for Purple Team so far. They've really been uh, covering their bases in pretty much every lane except perhaps middle lane where we saw T Swain trading very well with LeBlanc and Boogeyman Dark is getting taken incredibly low in the top lane. So as I was saying, each lane going quite well for Purple Team here. Already got a kill onto both of their hyper carries. Well, you could say you could even say they have three hyper carries. LeBlanc can certainly do a good job of filling that role herself. Whereas Master Yi and Tristana are both late game monsters, so getting those early kills are just going to help Purple Team 
wind down the clock a little bit, make it so it doesn't take quite as long for them to reach their late game potential. And that is what I was talking about in the middle lane. The trades going in favor of Swain pretty much every time. That time actually was fairly even, though. Between the Lunk and Swain, she turned it around, landed the chain, and got the secondary snare so she can land another auto attack or two in there. And at this point in the game, even those LeBlanc auto attacks, the tiny little balls of pink, purpley light, do in fact matter. Never move, not quite landing. And to blue team's credit, they could certainly come back in this one. Blue team, by the way, since this is a 5v5 match, I don't have to call them blue team. I can call them Corn LF or Corn Logic Flakes. Whereas the other side is QW, please. QW standing for a Spanish word that I cannot pronounce. I'm sorry, I'm a dirty American who can't speak Spanish too very well. I took French in high school, not Spanish. Who oh, <laughs> never moved landing just as the best gets back to base. That would have been... A little bit of a hairy moment there. Boogeyman Dark, I'm afraid you're not going to be able to farm the minion wave until it comes to your tower. Nice hook. Landing on Fiddlesticks is trying to clear out a ward, and Game Boy Color is going down very swiftly, forced to flash away. And it looks like he's not going to be quite advancing onto that ward yet. And if, if you got that joke, I feel very sorry for you. Lee Sin, looking for another gank. However, he gets hit up by the Never Move, the slow as well from the Crow Laser. The Ignite is dropped back onto him. Atrixer is trying to do a bunch of damage here, bring down this level 4 Lee Sin. He's level 6, the Laser, the Crow is following after, but no more damage is coming out of a no mana Swain. As the Chain and the Q both connect, the Ignite is dropped as well as taken under the Tower LeBlanc. Gonna be taking that kill after Swain burns all of his resources in the 1v1 with Lee Sin. It's 0-4 so far. The O being on the side of blue and the 4 being on the side of purple. Which means that there's about a 2,000 gold lead here for purple team at 7 minutes into this match. If this game keeps going in this direction, I don't really see very many ways for purple team to get back. I mean, blue team, rather, corn, logic flakes, to get back into this game. The hook landing onto the Tristana. Exhaust dropped as well as Lucian chases after Game Boy Color flashing forward to get into the brush to break. That lack of vision and now the flag going to be pulling Tristana back and they might very well go for two kills here. The flash... Going to be denying them that, but it, hey, a flash is worth your effort as well. So they get a flash, another flash, I believe, from the Fiddlesticks. No, that was actually burned earlier when he went at, went after the ward kill a little bit um, unwisely. But they also get that kill, and that is the first kill of the game, going over to Blue Team, going over to Corn Logic Flakes. So that's really going to help them out. Twisted Vance going back in, and Maokai looking to actually trade here with the uh, Master Yi, now that he's picked up a few items, got a bit of tankiness there, some health and mana sustain as well. That's really going to help him out in that lane, because he was running Oom a few times, and that was what was keeping him from getting all the farm that he really needed to get. However, he is only down by 5 CS, which is quite impressive, especially against a Master Yi who got that early first blood, has already picked up a Brutalizer and an Avarice Blade. He's really looking to get that gold stacking up, and uh, I mean, why wouldn't you want some good old gold? Gold is always nice to have. Pretty much no matter who you are, though. On Master Yi, it's it's a, it's especially effective. Pink Ward, spotted out by Boogeyman Dark, and Master Yi and Lee San are both nowhere nearby, so this Pink Ward has no one to defend it. He's going to fall. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night, sweet prince. Sorry, I'm just getting a little bit teary here over the death of the Pink Ward. All right, let's get back into the game as we see Master Yi charging in onto Boogeyman Dark. He's... Not really popping his ult, though. Just just a little bit of a trade as a <laughs> bunny hop on the other side of the wall from Tristana. That's always a little bit embarrassing when that happens. She tried to rocket jump over the wall, but it was a little bit too much for her to handle. She couldn't quite make it. Game Boy Color sitting in the bush. Tossing out the red trinket to sweep out their green ward, and that goes down. You know what? We have a little bit of a quiet moment unless Boogeyman Dark chooses to fight this, which he does. He's going in onto MJNR. Burning him down pretty well. He doesn't have Arcane Smash to break the Meditate, though, so MJNR is going to gain a bunch of health back. The Arcane Smash finally turns around, flash away from the Lee Sin gang, because he turns around with a Twisted Advance onto Master Yi under the tower, and he burns down the kill. Well done by Maokai, pulling Blue Team a little bit closer back into this game. They are now only about 1,500 behind. Ooh, LeBlanc leaping in. Doesn't want to trade more than that, though, and why that is one of the advantages of playing LeBlanc. You can basically choose your trades and then get right out. Distortion in after landing a Q, maybe maybe hit E just for a little bit more damage off the bat there, and then just press W again and you are home free. They can't really do much back to you. Though to be fair, that no longer silences them, so they can do a certain amount, and Swain is doing his best to do that amount. He turns around, does some good damage as well, and 
His advantage in this lane is that he's going to have a lot more sustain than the Lunk is going to have. Nice. Lantern going to be pulling Vi into the fight here. And they're going to be going down after the Tristana. Trying to bring her down real quick. And the armor shred happens just as she dies. Vi picks up that kill. And now MJNR is really in a bad place. Master Yi going to be falling over. And that is a 4 for 4 now on the board in terms of kills as Lee Sin. That was a little bit too deep for him. He gets exhausted as he leaps back out. Game Boy Color now getting hooked in to the blue team as Lee Sin falls over as well. So far it is a 1 for 4 trade. The, the Dark Shield. The Dark Passage, rather. Going to be keeping... Lucian alive through that last burst of damage that LeBlanc tried to put out, and that was a 5-for-1 trade overall. Not quite an ace because Tristana revived just at the end of the fight there. Death cooldowns are not really quite that long yet, but that puts Blue Team in the lead in terms of gold for probably the first, yeah, literally the first time this game since First Blood went over so early the purple. Corn Logic Flakes pulling themselves back into this game as the Dark Passage pulls Lucian back over to Thresh. You know what we should go into? What we should talk about? While we don't have any large amounts of action happening on the board, we should talk about some of the item builds. Nothing really surprising. Coming out of the top lane from the side of Corn Logic Flakes, but from the side of QW, please, we have a Yumu's Ghost Blade Rush from the Master Yi. Ooh, Corn Logic Flakes and Trixer in the middle lane is getting burnt down really quick by that LeBlanc. She does have a lot of burst, but it's not quite enough to bring down a Swain. Meanwhile, up in top lane, Boogeyman Dark turning around this trade onto NJNR, and he is going into Meditrate trying to avoid as much damage as he can, but that Maokai is really tanky. The Yumu's Ghost Blade and Highlander both popped at the same time, but he doesn't want to chase him out of the tower, not with that much hit points. As now Skrill Skull is in his jungle, and he's getting invaded here by Zadik. Zadik is not really getting the better of this trade, though. And there is the ball breaker. It's going to be landing, breaking a little bit of armor. But here is Tristana showing up to aid in the fight. At the same time that Lucian shows up, the calling going to be doing quite a bit of damage to the Lee Sin as Teleport is burning from the top lane. Everybody's showing up for a piece of this action. There is Crowstorm burning on a lot of members of the enemy team. Skrill Skull going to finally fall as Fiddlesticks does as well. And that is a two-for-one trade overall, despite pretty much everybody taking part in that aside from LeBlanc who decided to stick around in her lane and push that up a little bit, deny as much CS as she could. And actually, no, up in the top lane, Master Yi's teleport was not quite up, so he didn't get a piece of that pie. Instead, he is getting a piece of the turret pie. There's the never move, and this time it does hold the Blanc down before she can head on back to base. The laser and the torment going to be burning down the Blanc and getting that kill. Ooh, down in bottom lane, Tristana nearly gets hit by the hook, that one. Had me on the edge of my seat there. Doesn't quite land, though, and they're just going to be pushing up the minions, going up towards the tower, getting some damage onto that. Towers can't dodge. Much easier to hit than slippery Tristanas with their rocket jumping and their buster shouting and their right clicking to move places. Ooh, some good damage coming out from Swain, landing onto the Lee Sin. He gets burned down to half health, and this Swain is becoming a bit of a problem for uh, Purple Team over here for QW, please. Skrill Skull now taking advantage of the fact that Lee Sin is low on health. is going in for the invade, however does not count on the fact that Master Yi has roamed up out of the top lane. There is the Assault and Battery landing onto the Lee Sin, but he flashes over the wall at the last second. Vault Breaker dodged out by a very well-timed safeguard, and the Dragon's Rage is going to keep him alive as Swain falls off to the side to the damage from the Master Yi and LeBlanc. Now, the Exhaust is going to be at least stopping up a little bit of Master Yi's damage, but it's not going to be stopping his slow, or his movement speed, rather, as the Yumu's is popped from Lucian, trying to chase back after the Fiddlesticks into the jungle, but perhaps that was ill-advised. Flash burned, but the chain lands anyway. Buster Shot going to be securing the kill for Tristana. Purple team now turning their sights onto Dragon, going to be burning that down, draining it, till it is not... till it does not have any more hit points. That's, that's kind of the point here. Vest finds Skrull Skull over the other side of the wall, goes over trying to get the steal, but it was a valiant attempt that did not get rewarded. Aside, with, aside from with death, it was, it was rewarded with death. 10 to 10 now in terms of kills. Gold lead going in favor of Purple Team here because they do have the turret lead on the board as well as having just picked up that dragon that is a global gold lead, so despite being even on kills, they are ahead in terms of gold. However, the turret lead is evened out. Up in top lane, Maokai has been pushing this whole time. His teleport this time was the one not up, so he didn't get to roam down to that fight. <laughs> Tricks here, just uh, a Trixie. A Trixer? A Trixie? I... Eh, Spanish. Spanish is not a good friend of mine. I am not good at that language. Oop, the chain does not quite end up snaring. 
And he manages to break it just before it does so. Now he's trying to chase down Best, whose name is thankfully English, so I can I can say that one for you. Distortion forward. The chain doesn't quite land, though, and so no more damage to follow up as the hook flies out. Goes a little bit wide. Ooh, however, they're still going to be fighting. Game Boy Color goes down very swiftly to half of his hit points. Twinkie Man now tossing out. The calling his crow storm has popped. The calling landing with tons of the bullets, though, and one more would have meant... Fiddlesticks is doomed. That was a very close call for the Scarecrow Scary Dude. It's getting too close to Halloween. I'm a little bit spooked by that skin. The block looking to do some spooking of her own. Pink Ward going to spot out that Stealth Ward, though, and she's going to clear that out as the minions are near. Not, not going to finish off the tower yet. However, Maokai's here to tank it, and Luzian's here to right-click on it, so that turret does not have much longer to live. It does indeed fall over as the Never Move lands onto Lee Sin under the turret. And a Trixay is going to do some good damage to him as a consequence. Ooh, however, Highlander has popped after Master Yi teleports in. He uses the Yumus as well. He's getting as much movement speed as he possibly can. And there's LeBlanc leaping to the back lines and bringing down Lucy. And as Master Yi wreaks havoc on Boogeyman Dark, he's getting burned down despite the fact that he's a very tanky Maokai. He's at about a fifth of his health as he runs away. The hook lands onto Master Yi, though, and he has no more mana, so he can't Alpha Strike. And they turn around onto Tristana immediately thereafter, Thresh finishing off that kill as Lee Sin... And Fiddlesticks are both going to have to turn tail and flee. Well, that actually went far more in favor of Corn Logic Flakes than I really expected it to. I was expecting it to go at least moderately in favor of QW Please, but they spent a little bit too much time chasing. Master Yi ran himself out of mana and ran himself into the ground. Never move, landing on a two-up members of the enemy team, but they don't. Really want to follow that one up. They've got nobody in range, and a lot of ultimates have been burned in that last fight, so not much doing there. One of the nice things about Blue Team's comp that I did just notice, speaking of ultimates, Swain and Maokai both have incredibly low cooldown ultimates. They're sort of just toggleable, you might even say. Swain's at least very much is. Maokai has a bit less of a toggleable sense there as there is fiddlesticks and lee sin trying to burn down the swain speaking of that the exhaust is dropped and that is a double kill for master yi and that is a dangerous thing to give over to the master yi if uh, if he can get a few more of those then he can start to become uncontrollable for blue team though to be fair on the side of corn logic flakes there is a lot of control a lot of control they have thresh landing hooks they've got Swain landing snares, they've got Maokai landing snares, they've got Vi landing ults, and a few of their, they have some skill shot CCs with the Swain and the Thresh, but a few of their CCs are just point and click, which is the bane of a Master Yi. Vi and Maokai are both going to be able to hold him still even when he's using the Yumu's Ghost Blade and the Highlander and all of that mobility that he is so heavily invested into. If they can just stop him from going quick, then they can burn him down. They have the damage to do it, certainly. Master Yi is not a tanky character. He's a very squishy dude. So if they can hold him in place, then they can certainly deal with the problem. It's just a matter of holding him in place. And you know, I almost wish that the Fiddlesticks was on the side of Corn Logic Flakes, because that is a hilarious interaction to see. The Fiddlesticks terrify along with Master Yi's ult, because terrify has a minor slow accompanied to it. However, Master Yi can't be slowed while he's ulting. So that means he runs away, because now terrify runs, forces someone to run away. There's no random element that just forces them to run away from Fiddlesticks. He runs away at full Highlander Yumu's ult speed. Which means he, like, ends up running halfway back down the lane. And there's Lee Sin getting caught out. Twisted Advance going to be holding him in place as Lee Sin does, in the end, go down. That was not a very surprising moment there. He flew with a little bit of Lee Syndrome into five members of the enemy team. And that is not a nice thing to do. Nice hook landing on to Master Yi. He goes into Alpha Strike to try and keep himself alive a little bit longer. But it's going to be a vain effort. He falls over in the end to Thresh picking up that kill. As LeBlanc does manage to take down the Lucian, but... But Tristana falls as well, so that is 80 carry for 80 carry. And the other remaining members of the blue team are going to take down this turret and take down this LeBlanc as well. She's going very low. Twisted Advance is going to follow her back after 
She uses the second activation of Distortion. Maokai does not care where you go, he will follow you no matter what. And there's the Flash Vault Breaker from Vi, gonna be interrupting Game Boy Color's Crow Storm. That is going to be a little bit depressing for the Fiddlesticks, and he's got a little bit cornered in the jungle here. Nowhere to run. The minion followed him into the bush, so they know that he's sitting in there because he hasn't come out from either side yet. Dark Passage, though, gonna be pulling Swain away through the jungle, and they give up on the chase. I'm a little bit surprised that they gave up on the chase, actually. Fiddlesticks was kind of caught out all by his lonesome in the jungle there, but I suppose they just didn't want to overextend. They were taking some lessons from when QW Please had that fight in the bag and then decided to keep on chasing, so they took what they could, which happened to be an inner middle turret and a few kills, and backed up afterwards. Perfectly legitimate strategy. Nothing wrong with that. Dragon, actually, is recently spawned they might be deciding to go after that they're getting some good vision in the area they have wards in the pit already they're using some pinks clearing out some enemy pinks just generally getting good vision coverage all the things that are really associated with that as uh speaking of good vision coverage the ward allows them to check that the Lee Sin is in the bush and there's the twisted advance landing on a master e and he's caught out all by himself forced to flash over the wall to escape a unlikely and unhappy situation Oh, that crit damage, though, and there is the culling going to be finishing off the kill as Trisdana is somehow on 50 health. We didn't get to see any of that, but one assumes that she tried to trade with Swain and came out the worse for the wear because of it. Vi now heading down to stop Master Yi from trying to solo the dragon as Game Boy Color. They just keep getting caught out on these wards. Such good ward coverage by Corn Logic Flakes, keeping vision everywhere around this dragon pit and once more catching out the fiddlesticks in the bush and this time he's not going to be able to have flash to be able to escape lucian finishes off the kill i'm sorry if you can hear creaking and such in the background i try and keep it to a minimum however my desk chair is very loud and the slightest bit of movement which sometimes happens when i get excited about games does cause it to complain at me and I'm sorry if you can hear it's sometimes loud complaints. There it goes again. <laughs> Distortion over the wall from LeBlanc. Going to be keeping herself safe. However, there's still an advantage on the board for blue team here. And there's a hook landing onto Lee Sin. He's getting burned down. The torment is running, but it's not going to be enough to bring him down fully as LeBlanc is going to be going in and getting the kill onto Lucien. And that can happen at any time if you're not careful. If you're squishy and not careful around a LeBlanc, that is a bad combination of things to be. Meanwhile, up in top lane, we have Maokai going in onto MJNRJ4. That is a very convoluted name, and he's burning him down pretty well. The Twisted Advance lands as well. Arcane Smash going to be knocking him up and doing a bunch of damage. Boogeyman Dark is on a rampage. Meanwhile, we have Tristana and LeBlanc chasing down after Kazadas, and he's not going to be very long for this world. Drops the box, but it's a little bit post-mortem, which means that it happened a little bit too late. Pink Ward found out by Atrixe. Atrixe? I think that's how you pronounce it. Atrixe. Please tell me if my pronunciation of these names is absolutely terrible. I I don't do it on purpose, I promise. It's it's just that I'm bad at it. Atrixe shooting out the never move doesn't quite land on anybody, and he didn't really have mana to follow it up anyways, but Boogeyman Dark is certainly following up. He's running through the entire enemy team. He gets knocked away by the Dragon's Rage, though. And uh, probably to his benefit, actually, that that happened. He was caught out a little bit without his team. Swain didn't have any mana to follow up. The rest of his team was still on their way from base. And Zadik, this is way too brave. Yes, he, he safeguards to award. He's not getting that Wraith Cap. I'm sorry, friend. It's a little bit too dangerous. Too, too rich for your blood. Five members of blue team assembling in the middle lane. Corn Logic Flakes, assemble. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have some members of Purple Team milling through the jungle, picking up the camps, getting what gold they can. And you know what? This game is very, very even. Well, I say that, but it really seems like Corn Logic Flakes have been having the upper hand in nearly every one of these team fights recently. They're still only a tiny amount ahead in gold. They're only ahead by four or five hundred at the most at any point. However, it's just. Their team comp is so good at shutting down what Purple Team is trying to do. They're trying to get their Master Yi super fed and running through the enemy team and getting those resets and getting all that damage. And speaking of Master Yi, he's in a duel with a Trixie up in the top lane and he's going to go into Meditate, but the Ignite plus Torment is going to 
burn him to the ground. Doesn't matter how much he meditates, how calm and silent he gets. He's still on fire, and it's kind of hard to meditate through that. He goes for a one-for-one -one trade in the end. Top laner for top laner. And purple team's going to take that advantage to push up the middle lane, because I do believe that is an advantage for them. However, Boogeyman Dark has respawned at this point, and it wasn't actually top laner for top laner. Swain is not in the top. I'm used to Swain being in the top lane, actually. That's where I've seen him the most recently, which is odd. He was a mid lane champion for quite a while, but now that I think about it, I've only ever seen him top in the last few months. There is LeBlanc, forced to flash away, as now Zadik is the one in trouble. The calling going to be landing a bunch of bullets onto him, and he's going to leap away as well. But that's two members of QW, please, going very low here, and Boogeyman Dark is looking for the engage. Flash forward, landing the hook off of Karades. That is a very well done Thresh play right there, as the best is going to be going down here. Game Boy Color coming in with the Crow Storm, but he gets immediately exhausted. No meaningful damage is going to come out of that. Master Yi might be able to clean up here. He does get the kill on Vai. He gets... No, he doesn't get the second kill into Karades yet. He finally finishes it off, but a very well-timed hook prevents Master Yi from getting the second kill in time to be able to loop it into a third one. That Thresh was the MVP of that particular team fight. He did very, very well. The flash hook onto a distorting LeBlanc and still landing it. That was well done. And keeping a good amount of crowd control onto the Master Yi and making sure that he didn't end up a Master Yi victim and thus keeping Lucian alive as well in the process. So very well done by Karades, which I think is how you pronounce his name, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop berating myself for my own pronunciation at this point. I'm just going to go with it, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. We should look into some of the items. You know, we haven't done that in a very long time. And uh, there's some good items that have formed, some interesting builds, and some of them are worth talking about, especially the Vi. She's gone with a Sheen and a Phage, which tells me that she's going for she's either going for a Trinity Force or doesn't know how to build things. And we're going to assume that she's going for a Trinity Force, because that's the nicer thing to assume. Um, which is a very powerful item on Vi, but I'm a little bit skeptical to it right now, because she's not really been hyper-carrying, not really been super strong carrying. The, the members of her team that have been doing a lot of good work this game have been the Maokai and the Lucian, not to mention the Thresh, who's done some amazing plays, but he's not really carrying because he's the support, that's not his job. But he's certainly doing quite well. As you see, a Baron started off by the Lee Sin and the Master Yi, quickly joined by Tristana and the rest of the team, really. Yeah, Fiddlesticks and LeBlanc going to be bringing up the rear here as the Baron's getting brought down pretty swiftly. For blue teams assembling, but I don't think they're going to be here in time. Yeah, there's the smite secure from Lee Sin. Going to be, well, securing Baron as the rest of the team's going to just head on back to base. That is a very clean Baron. Just stuck out from under the noses of, um, from under the notices, noses of Corn Logic Flakes. So, kudos going over to QW, please, here as we see Karares and Kazares. Kazares, that is a Z, not an R. I think I've been getting it wrong this whole time. Kazares and Skrill Skull. Going after the dragon. And that completed Triforce does have the benefit of burning down this dragon pretty quick. Getting those armor-breaking shots every third hit. Burns it down pretty effectively. So yeah, that's that that's pretty good. That's a pretty nice little bonus from the Triforce. But I'm still skeptical because she's going to be... This, this Vi, because she's not really the one doing the killing on the enemy team. Of the enemy team, rather... She's going to be the one doing the engaging. She has to jump to the back line of the enemy team, go after this Tristana, after this LeBlanc, hold down these incredibly mobile carries over on the side of QW, please. So, with the Triforce isn't exactly a tanky item. It has some health, but not very much, as a trick say. Might be in trouble. Oh, the flash doesn't quite make it over the wall. That is depressing, but there is a ward there, and he's going to be able to Alpha Strike to follow it up. Zonia's popped by. The Swain going to be saving his life. That was a close call. That Master Yi is outputting a lot of damage at this point. It's only going to get worse as it looks like he's going for a Trinity Force as well, which is a little bit odd. Yeah, don't see Master Yi's pull out the Triforce very often, but I I don't know. It could work. It could certainly work. Going after the Pink Ward here, and this very well might be a battle that's going to be fought. There's the hook landing onto Lee Sin, followed up flying forward with the Thresh, dropping the box to try and hold them there for his team to show up, but the fear is going to... Well, fear him away. 
as the Cullen comes out for a little bit of damage, but nothing more than that. Well, I mean, actually, a good amount more than just that. They burnt a lot of cooldowns there. I believe two flashes were used, as well as perhaps an exhaust. No, no, the exhaust was not dropped, but there were major cooldowns burned from the side of QW, please. So that was worth it, I would say. They're going to go ahead and push up some of the lanes. They've got Swain up in the top, pushing that out. Swain is actually quite a good split pusher. He's not very good at breaking down the tower once he gets to it, but he can take those minion waves out very, very swiftly. There's a lot of AoE damage, especially with his ulti running, as well as he can drop Never Move onto the back line if he really feels like he needs to to clear out that minion wave very instantly. And he has teleport, so he can get into the team fights and be that monstrous, high damage, high tankiness front line that um, Corn Logic Flakes has been making such great use of so far. And not to mention he's pretty good in the one versus one as well. So if somebody goes to try and stop him, he can deal with them pretty effectively, as we saw when he 1v1 the Master Yi earlier and actually managed to make a 1 for 1 trade and there's the Twisted Advance! Following Tristana, incredibly far flash hook from the Thresh, gonna be securing this kill as the flash from Tristana comes out of the very last second there. I don't know if you saw that, but there was a little flash of golden light as she tried to get away with her last five hit points, but, well, it, it didn't really work out too well for her. She's on a 30 second death timer now, and we are going to be pushing up the middle lane with Team Corn Logic Flakes. And a Maokai who has a lot of tankiness, a lot of armor. Look at that. That is a, that is a Thorn Mail and a Frozen Heart. Good health backing that up too, along the uh, Rod of Ages, building that up. And Master Yi, <laughs> Master Yi not really giving Vi the respect she deserves, and he gets instantly just, just deleted by multiple members of Blue Team, all teaming up on him. He goes down, and that is pretty much the fight one right there. Lucian picking up the kill onto Thresh. I mean, on to Lee Sin. Fiddlesticks going down as well, and this might be game here going over to Corn Logic Flakes. They're at the Nexus turrets. They're trying their best, but Tr Tristana falls nearly as soon as she gets back up. LeBlanc's doing a good job of being a distraction off to the side there, but Swain eventually gives up, wanders back on over to the Nexus turrets, and starts throwing bolts of green magic -y death at them. What... Some of the champions, what they throw as auto attacks just doesn't even look like they should hurt. I mean, Nami throws tiny little splishes of water. That's... that That's not something that can destroy turrets, but apparently it can. I digress. We're going to move on back to the matter at hand, which is the fact that both Nexus turrets just fell, but the Nexus, not, not so much, seeing as the game is still running. We have not yet seen a victory screen for either team. That rhymed a little bit. I don't know, maybe I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Hey. I'm sorry. Too many, too many diversions this game. Too much getting off track. I digress. We're getting back into the game. Where we can look at some of the builds, since, as I said, we haven't had time to go into those as much as I would really like to. In addition to the Trinity Force that Vi has just completed, it looks like she's finally going into some far more tanky items. Past that Spirit of the Ancient Golem, at least. She's got the ingredients for Randwood's Omen, and it is golden fiddlesticks time. And I think he probably meant to place a ward, but accidentally hit the wrong button and turned into a golden statue. I hate it when I do that. I hate it when I go to drop a little green thing on the ground, but accidentally turn into a golden statue. It's really, really annoying and frustrating. It happens to me all the time. Baron going to be spawning in about a minute, and it might be that Corn Logic Flakes is waiting for that objective to spawn so they can either force a team fight there, win it, and then, well, go take the open nexus, or just take it if nobody shows up to fight them for it. And Best is caught way out of position here. Game Boy Color is not enough backup to save him from Exe from Extrixe. Extrixe, I think. Skrill Skull now chasing after Game Boy Color through the jungle. There is the Charging Vault Breaker. There is the Landing Vault Breaker. And he gets instantly destroyed by the Calling immediately after trying to flash away. And Assault and Battery going to be falling Tristana over the wall, as does a Relentless Pursuit from the Lucian following as well. And the Zonia has popped from the Swain to keep himself alive a little bit longer, waiting for Thresh to show up for the backup. We have Lee Sin and Master Yi both burning down pretty quick, but over your Nexus! Your Nexus! Ah, oh, and that is going to be GG going down. Corn Logic Flakes pick up the victory here against QW, please. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, well, click subscribe here. I'll see you next time. Hi there, everybody. Octavian here. Thank you very much for watching the video, especially 
getting to the end here, I realize not everybody does, but you did. You're a soldier, you're a trooper, you're the best. If you enjoyed it, consider hitting like, maybe leaving a comment, pressing the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes me very happy. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow, I suppose. Oh, and if you want your replay to be featured in the series, in the description will tell you how to do that. It will. I promise. I promise it will. Anyways. <laughs>